welcome to Around the Dog World here at the annual stopover, the Chesford Grange Hotel in Kenilworth. Gathering here this weekend in Warwickshire are 29 of the UK's top dogs, all competing for a ticket to the Netherlands to compete at the Yukonuba World Challenge Finals. This weekend, we'll find out who the UK representative is to make it through to those finals. Today's competitors have all beaten top competition at shows around the country under some of the most respected judges, including the gentleman sitting to my left. And they each arrive here to go under the scrutiny of two secret judges. But before we get on to today's action, we need to take a little look back to the latest Best in Show winners that we've missed from the previous programme. And this weekend, unfortunately, we are without Simon, uh, who's actually whelping a litter of his own. Congratulations, Simon and Samaya, on the birth of baby Isla. But I am joined by Andrew, who's our resident expert. Thank you very much for joining us through the proceedings My this pleasure. weekend. Now, Andrew, despite it being a few weeks since Darlington, Driffield, Belfast, South Wales, Gundog Society of Wares, we are going to chat about all five shows. Mm -hmm. But Darlington and Driffield, we saw... Oliver, the Wire Fox Terrier, take best in show for, wow, a record Eight, time. 18th and 19th best in show, which is, which is an all-time record now, I believe. Yeah. A remarkable feat for a dog that's still relatively young. Now, Belfast was our next stop, mm -hmm. and we had a new best in show judge taking... Chris Chapman. Yeah, yeah. Chris Chapman, and um, she actually picked a new best in show winner as well. The Vimerana, um, Gunnolt de Ice at Stridview, owned by Karen Whitehead, handled by Jackie Ward. Um, yet another in a long line of champions bred by Stephen and Patsy Hollings. They're Gunnolt by Maranas. Uh, um, I mean, they've set a benchmark in the breed. Um, and Jackie Ward, who's a close personal friend, has, has handled a lot of these, um, these gun arts to top awards. Yeah, a very impressive record for that team there. And just last week, the crowds travelled down to South Wales. Yes. Where our cameras were there, capturing Best in Show. First in, the Malamud, the winner of the working group. The Pyrenean Mountain Dog, the winner of the pastoral group. The Irish Water Spaniel. The Terrier group is won by the Irish. From the Hound group, we have the Whippets. The Utility group winner, the Bulldog. And finally, the Toy group winner, the Little Long Coat Chihuahua. So the first out for Bill Brown Cole's individual assessment is our working group winner, the Alaskan Malamute. This is a three and a half year old male who won the group under Stuart Mallard. The Alaskan Malamute, the winner of the working group. This three-year-old Pyrenean mountain dog male won the pastoral group under Rod Oldham. The Pyrenean mountain dog is 5950. This is the Gundog Group winner, the Irish Water Spaniel. Now five years of age, he won the group under Chris Bexon. The Irish Water Spaniel, 3717. 
the terrier group winner is this Irish terrier male who's just 14 months of age. And it was Peter Bakewell who judged the terrier group. The Irish Terrier is 1066. On the table now is the Whippet, who won the Hound Group under Gavin Robertson. This is a 22 month old bitch. And we're now looking at the Whippet Bitch 775. <laughs> this is the Utility Group winner. The Bulldog Male, now three and a half years of age, and his number is 3955. The Bulldog, the winner of the Utility Group. On the table now we have the long coat chihuahua, the winner of the toy group, a two-year-old male who topped the group under Des Jenkins. So one final study of seven excellent group winners. I'm sure the decision will not be easy, but there can only be one best in show winner. And Bill himself has been at that end of the decision many, many times, but now he's going to point. And where is he going to point? It's the long coat chihuahua. The long coat chihuahua, the winner of the tie group, goes best in show, number 1600. And reserve. It's the Whippet, and that's a loud cheer for a relatively local Whippet, number 775. The best in show winning Long Coat Chihuahua, followed by the Whippet Spitch. Holiel Topaz Chancer owned by Leslie Adams. Um, a, a, really, a really super little chihuahua with a correct coat. Fabulous showmanship. A very saucy little long coat chihuahua dog. The dog was on his toes all the time and it was a popular win and I don't think anybody queried Billy's choice. And then shortly after that we had Gun Dog Society of Wales, um, yeah. Sharon Pinkerton who again we've seen well, win the group um, a couple of times the latter part of this year yeah. with a German wirehead pointer. Mm -hmm. She took the role of judge at Best in Show and um, well she chose a flat coat retriever as mm. her winner. Bally River Blake. Yeah, Scottish based dog, I believe, as are a lot of top winning flat coats, including the famous Jet, who won Best in Show at Cross. And that just about wraps everything up before today. So let's see how that leaves the top dog standings. Well, Oliver, the Y Fox Terrier champion, Traveller Striking Steel, has an unassailable lead, but there is a big battle for the rest of the placings. So, a few more shows left, let's see how it goes. So Andrew, looking at this weekend, the Yukon Uber Champion Stakes Final, there are no points on offer this weekend, so it's not going to affect the top dog placings, but this prize is just the most alluring, isn't it, on the circuit? 
Yes, I mean, obviously, uh, everyone would like to win the, the Yukonuba Champion Stakes final um, just for the prestige of winning that competition because, um, as everyone knows, the competition in this country is pretty much as, as tough as it gets. But the winner of today's Champion Stakes final will then go forward to compete at the Yukonuba World Challenge, which, of course, last year was won by Ricky. The first time ever the UK has won it with the standard poodle who then came home and went best in show at Crafts. The dogs here are of the highest quality. Sort it's, of a, it's, it's, it's probably, you know, the ultimate level because to become a UK champion is a feat in itself. And when you actually judge the champion stakes, it's a double-edged sword because you have such fantastic quality that every detail actually counts. And it's very much about performance on the day. And of course, none of the exhibitors or handlers today actually know who the judges are. No, and I imagine it'll be a big surprise to many of them. It's not you, is it, Andrew? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm going to be too busy compensating. <laughs>
Timo to von Wackenhagen at Kimax. This is James, otherwise known as champion Free Hamlet, Perfect Peers. Dog number 21 is the Siberian Husky, champion Eskimo, Prince of Fallon. Next comes the Tibetan Spaniel bitch, champion Malia Melissa of Starlance. Number 23 in the program is the German Shepherd Dog, champion Elmo von Humagrab. Number 24 is champion and American champion Chatelet Aradet Rugby. The Saluki champion Baghdad Karim. Number 26, the Papillon champion and Finnish champion Paparazzi Painted Lord. Number 27 is champion Travella Striking Steel, champion Minilia's Black Mambo. The Rottweiler male, and finally, as they say, we come to the Border Terrier male, champion Dandy Ho, Dr. Walter. Now, up until a few hours ago, the identity of the judges was a secret. Um, there are two gentlemen who have achieved incredible success in the dog world, each of them individually having piloted dogs through to win Best in Show at Crufts. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, will you give a big Yukonuba welcome, please, to Jeff Corrish and Michael Code. <laughs> Basically, Jeff and Michael will just have a glance along the lineup of the 29 dogs, and then one by one, they will have the chance for their individual hands-on assessment. So that concludes that first glance along these 29 top winning champions. So 28 finalists leave the ring and that leaves us with dog number one in the catalog, which is the Bulldog. They have been told not to confer, by the way. That's your Bulldog, number one in the program. He's the winner of 12 CCs, five reserves, and has 11 times been best of breed. And each of these dogs are being marked individually with points out of 100. Then we have dog number two, the Scottish Terrier. Number two in the program is the Scottish Terrier champion, Stuart Lillet. Flown qualified at the LKA, where the judge was Becky Johnson. She's the winner of 25 cc's. Next, we have the, the smooth hair dachshund, champion Carpaccio Cognac Diamond. She's qualified at Boston under Anne Hardy. She's two and a half years of age, the winner of seven CCs. That's dog number four, the Shetland Sheepdog, our Manchester qualifier. Number four, the Shetland Sheepdog. 39 cc's, eight group ones, best in show at three counties and Leeds. And this is the United Kingdom toy dog qualifier, the Chinese crested bitch, number five. Now four years of age, she's won 50 challenge certificates, 43 of them with best of breed. Number six. This is the Wire Fox Terrier, number six, who qualified at the National Terrier. 
She's a multiple Best in Show winner in Ireland and is now three years of age. Fifteen Group 1s, including the group at Crufts and the Helsinki World Show this year. The Australian Shepherd Bitch, who qualified at Welks. He's now five years of age. He's owned, bred, and handled by Jane Wilton Clark. He's won 31 cc's. The Whippet, number eight, who qualified at Birmingham National. Now the winner of 12 cc's, 15 reserves, was best in show at the Basenji Championship show and is following both parents and an older brother who were also in the past Yukonuba Champion Stakes finalists. <laughs> the Basenji, number nine, qualifier from the SKC May show. He won four CCs, and that's probably down to the fact that most of his adult life he spent in Europe, where he was handled by Javier Gonzalez Mendicote to become a multiple best in show winner. Dog number 10, the last Apso, who qualified at Bath. The Dalmatian, Offerdale Chevalier, now four years of age, and the winner of 43 challenge certificates, 38 of them with best of breed. He was best in show at the British Utility Breeds. The Southern Counties qualifier, the Dalmatian, number 11. <laughs> Flo is now the winner of 23 cc's. 10 reserves and 20 championship show best to breed. She was reserve best in show at Blackpool last year, reserve best in show at Southern Counties this year. The three counties qualifier. Pointer bitch number 12. He's the winner of 24 cc's and 15 reserves. Was group two at Manchester this year and also best in show at the Gordon Setter Association Championship Show. The Gordon Setter, the Border Union qualifier number 13. He's now the winner of 25 CCs and 25 best to breed. One group two, two group threes and three group four and in 2012, he was reserved top puppy of all breeds. The Sarpe, number 14, the qualifier from Blackpool. Our next finalist is another pointer. He's the winner of two CCs and one reserve, but became an Irish show champion at two years of age, winning his junior warrant at eight months and a show certificate of merit at 15 months. Number 15, the pointer who was our Windsor qualifier. He's won 13 CCs, 10 of them with best to breed. Was best in show at the City of Birmingham show last year. Also best in show at the LKA. Number 16, the East of England qualifier. And of course, we all remember him for the reserve best in show at Crufts earlier this year.
number 17 is the Bearded Collie. She's won five CCs, four of them with best of breed, and took group two at three counties on the day she won her title. <laughs> number 17, the Bearded Collie, who qualified at Leeds. Miniature Wirehair Dachshund, number 18, the Hound Show qualifier. She's won 15 CCs and more than 20 bests of breed, has had several club bests in show. Now the winner of 15 CCs and 30 reserves with 22 bests of breed. The German wirehead pointer, number 19, the national gun dog qualifier. Now we come to another whippet, the winner of five CCs, three of them with best of breed, and at Boston Championship Show earlier this year, he won group two. The Painton qualifier, the whippet male, number 20. Dog number 21 is the winner of five CCs and 11 reserves. And he was Abby's handling dog when she won the UK Junior Handler of the Year in 2012. <laughs> the Siberian Husky, a male who qualified at Bournemouth. Next comes the Tibetan Spaniel bitch. Maisie is the winner of 11 CCs and 10 reserves. The Tibetan Spaniel, the bitch who qualified at the Welsh Kennel Club, and the only Tibetan Spaniel to ever qualify for the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final. Number 23 in the programme is the German Shepherd Dog. He's the breed record holder as far as best in show and group wins are concerned. The German Shepherd Dog male who qualified at the Scottish Kennel Club, number 23. Elmo is now eight years of age. The Skipper Cape male who qualified at the city of Birmingham. He's now the winner of 24 challenge certificates, 22 of them with best to breed. The Skipper Cape, number 24, he qualified at the city of Birmingham. Number 25, he's now the winner of 10 challenge certificates, five of them with best to breed, and has qualified for this event every year since he gained his title. The Richmond qualifier, the Saluki male, number 25. Now the winner of five CCs with all of them with best of breed. He won group one and reserve best in show at Welks this year. The Papillon male who qualified at Darlington, number 26. Number 27 is now the winner of 15 CCs and would you believe 19 all breed best in show. The Driffield qualifier, the Wire Fox Terrier male, number 27. <laughs> now the winner of 14 CCs, 12 of them with best to breed, he won the group at Crufts. The Belfast qualifier, Rottweiler male, number 28. And finally, as they say, we come to the Border Terrier male. Thomas is the winner of 12 CCs. 
11 of them with best of breed. The South Wales Kennel Association qualifier, the Borgia Terrier male number 29, which is our last Yukonuba champion stakes finalist to be seen by our two judges today. The gentlemen on my left are doing their sums and coming up with the top pointed seven dogs and they will return for a second round and a second scoring. We have a final seven. If you'd like to make a note in your program, the seven dogs who are to return for the second round. Number one, the Bulldog. Number four, the Shetland Sheepdog. Number seven, the Australian Shepherd. Number 12, the Pointer Bitch. Number 18, the Miniature Wirehair Dachshund. Number 23, the German Shepherd Dog. Number 27, the wire-haired fox terrier male. So our two judges now have to reevaluate these seven dogs. Again, it'll be done on a point system. And I am guessing that they're probably going to be moving these dogs a little more before coming to a decision. So we're now down to a very, very high level of quality in, in this shortlist. So I'm sure all seven finalists would appreciate your support. This is number one, the Bulldog. Shetland Sheepdog. Number seven, the Australian Shepherd. Number 12, the Pointer. Number 18, the miniature wirehair Jackson.
Number 23, the German Shepherd Dog. And number 27, the wire-haired fox terrier male. So when both judges have scored the remaining seven dogs, they will all leave the ring. The calculations will take place and we will then announce the winners in reverse order. the new chairman was sat in the audience tonight? Yes. What would you ask him? To care. I see myself as the judge that was banned. As you can see, the boards are out. There are, there are five placings. Before we place the five, I would like to point out that at the World Challenge for the last few years, the Crafts Best in Show winner has been invited. Obviously this year, Ricky, champion Afterglow Maverick Sabre, was invited. However, in view of the fact that he's previously won the final, I understand that he is not competing at the upcoming World Challenge, so in his stead, the reserve best in show from Crafts, the Samoyed, will go in his place. So we'd like to invite into the ring champion Nikara, Diamond Dancer, who will be the Crafts representative at the Ukanuba World Challenge in Amsterdam in December. As I said, the five placings are to be announced in reverse order. So, in fifth place goes the Wire Fox Terrier number 27. Champion Travella, Striking Steel. Well done to Richard Allen and to Oliver. In fourth place, it's the point a bit show champion Will Cremain, Ice Maiden, flow with Amelia Siddle. In third place, we have the Miniature Wire Dachshund, champion Drake Sleet, St. Sybil, with Zena Horn Andrews. In second place, the German Shepherd, Champion Elmo von Hoonagrab, number 23. Elmo with Steve Cox, handling for John and Pauline Cullen. So, 
So who's going to Amsterdam? Well, I'm hazarding a guess and thinking that this is going to be hugely popular because it's going to be a question of not Debbie does Dallas, but Debbie does Amsterdam. It's Sid the Shelty. Huge congratulations to Debbie Pearson with champion Edgelonian singing the blues, Sid. And as I said, I think you can safely say that's a very popular win. And it's certainly a triumph for the pastoral breeds with the Shetland Sheepdog and the German Shepherd in the top two positions. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Congratulations to Debbie Pearson and Sid. Yeah. I'm not altogether certain Amsterdam is ready for Debbie Pearson, but we'll find out in December. Fantastic, Debbie. You've just won the Yukon Uber Champion Stakes Final 2014. That was a hugely popular oh, win. Oh, my goodness. And so unexpected, I should imagine. Really, really unexpected. I was hoping to get shortlisted, which was going to be very, very nice. And when I got shortlisted, I was thrilled with that. Absolutely thrilled. But I was sat waiting outside and the tension was building and I kept looking at the other two dogs that were left and I thought, no chance. And then when Andrew said, and Debbie does, and I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie does Dallas, yeah. but Debbie's going to do the Netherlands. Debbie's going to do Amsterdam, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so you've had a massive support team here. Yes. Um, what is it like having all that support around you? My friends have been brilliant, they're here, uh, they've been cheering me along. And it's just been great. It's been great. So I'm definitely looking forward to a party tonight. And Sid is no stranger to obviously big wins. He's had a best in yeah. show this two year. Best in shows, two yeah. best in shows, absolutely. And he took the breed record as well. Yes. Um, what a year. And to finish it off with this, you can't really get much better than that. You can't. You can't. It's a wonderful way to finish the year. Absolutely wonderful way. And, <laughs> and does he have a pet passport? Not yet, but I'll be getting to the vets on Monday, oh. that's for sure. <laughs> I'll be getting to the vets on Monday. Okay, well, many congratulations. Like Andrew said, don't get too drunk, but it, it was wonderful to see. <laughs> Thank you. Give me a kiss. <laughs> Thank you. There you are, there's your Yukonuba champion stakes finalist, one, two, three, four, and five, led off by Sid the Shelty. It was the first time here at the Yukon Uber Champion Stakes that actually the judging panel consisted of a partnership. Now, we have Jeff Korish and Michael Code. You've been in dogs to absolute years and years between you. You've got oodles of experience between you. You've been even competing at these Champion Stakes with different dogs before. So you are totally used to this Champion Stakes final. But what was it like to judge it? It was much harder than I ever imagined. But you've judged best in show at Crafts. That's easier. <laughs> That's easier because you can just point at one dog and, you know, I, I could have pointed at one dog today, but if Michael hated it and I loved it, he wouldn't win. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a completely different scenario. Yeah. It was so exciting to the end there, wasn't it, Michael? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how you felt when you had done the judging. I saw that you two were actually sort of conferring by then because obviously you'd done your job. But yeah. what were you feeling then and what did you think was going to come out top? I, I think we were feeling relieved it was, it was over. That sounds awful, but <laughs> it was a sense of relief that we got through it. The, the dogs were fantastic. The, I think it was, I don't do a lot of judging, but I think it was one of the hardest judging assignments I've ever, ever, ever had. The quality, made, the quality was so good. Yeah. The handling was good and, and the presentation was good. The dogs put up a great performance and it's just on the day, on the performance. What were your thoughts on that winner, the Shelty? She was I mean, wonderful, did everything right. Most wonderful condition, never, never put a foot wrong. Every time you, you looked at him, he was stood, yeah. and he, you know, and of course, Debbie does a wonderful job with him. You know, we've seen him many times, but it's the first time I put my hands on him. And when you put your hands in the, the condition, the coat gleamed. The body condition was fantastic. She must walk that dog miles to get that condition. And just one final point, guys. What will you take away from this judging experience today? Oh, it was just—it's just a wonderful occasion. The excitement of it all. Then you know, it was, it was sort of—it was sort of so exciting. Then the cheer when they win—it was wow. It nearly took the roof off. You know, so obviously everybody else thought the same as, as we did in the. Winner. But you know there was there was five there that 
Any one of them really could have, could have won it. I still think this country has got some of the best dogs in the world, and I think today proved it. Our winner, our first or second, third, fourth, fifth, they were just, in my opinion, wonderful. And a great credit to the breed, to the breeders, the owners, the handlers, the whole package. So, topping the Yukonuba Champion Stakes final here in the UK was Debbie Pearson's Shetland Sheepdog, Sid, champion Edgelonian singing the blues. Now, Andrew, the reaction from around the ring, I think, spoke volumes for it was that hugely win. Hugely popular, hugely popular. I mean, he's a great dog. You know, he's won two Best in Show. I watched him win Best in Show at Three Counties under Mark Gacosa. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're, they're a great team. And, of course, he took the breed record this year as well, he's which in, shelter, in yeah. a numerically strong breed like Shetland Sheepdogs, mm. that is an incredible achievement. Of course, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. When you're actually sitting, doing that commentating the whole time, do you actually get to see much of the judging? Um, it's very difficult, actually, because you, you obviously you've got to have one eye on, on all your copy and the material that you, you're using for reference. You, you, can't stop, you, you can't stop yourself watching um, and following what's good. Let's not beat about the bush. Everybody assumed, well, Oliver the Wire, he's won everything else. It's just going to be a walk in the park. But you know, as, as with all dog shows, nothing is ever a foregone conclusion. Um, we got down to this final seven yeah. and um, scored again. And I think there were quite a few raised eyebrows when I called out fifth, that was Oliver the Wire. Yes. Um, and then of course, fourth was Flo, yeah. the, you know, the beautiful pointer bitch. And then third was Zena with Sybil, uh, the mini wire. Um, so then there were two placings left and then everybody you could see were like on the edge of their seats um, and, and I have to say, I mean, Elmo the German Shepherd, as you know, is, is a great, is a a great favourite of mine. He's, he's a veteran dog. I've never seen him look better. And I mean, when I got the results, in, I mean, I knew this was going to be such a popular win because Debbie Pearson is she embodies all that's good about her sport. You know, she's an owner, handler, breeder. You know, she's not a vastly wealthy person, but you know, she and her father before her, you know, they bred top class shelties for many, many generations. Um, and, and she's a great sport and, and everyone loves Debbie. So Debbie's off to Amsterdam yeah. and, and God help Amsterdam. <laughs> that's all I can say. Well, it sounds like that the results are going down well because it sounds like the party's starting almost behind us as we speak. So yeah. we need to get off and change for tonight's proceedings. But Very thank much. you, Andrew, for a wonderful weekend. Really enjoyed having you with us. Um, that's about it from here at the Yukonuba Champion Stakes for another year. The Chesford Grange at Hotel provides a wonderful backdrop for a wonderful competition. We'll see you next time on Around the Dog World at Booba.